Welcome to Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Daniel Pineda. We have a great program this week. We have our news stories, community bulletin board, and 55 plus news. But first, a social media reminder. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. Also on Facebook and WERA 96.7. FM. And now on to our first news story for today. As of Saturday morning, August 21st, reports show the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Arlington increased by 230 for the week, up to 16,236. We at Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News will continue to monitor the situation as the summer progresses. As for vaccinations, as of August 21st, 150,838 Arlingtonians have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. The number having received two doses was 135,950. Based upon our best estimate of Arlington's population over the age of 12, the percentage of 212,800 eligible Arlingtonians who are at least partially vaccinated is a little over 70.88%. However, the fully vaccinated percentage is still only 63.88%. Following an announcement from Arlington County Department of Parks and Recreation, the Lawn Bridge Aquatics and AMP Fitness Center open on Monday, August 23rd with two pools, a 50-meter competition pool with lap lanes and diving towers, as well as a leisure pool with a water slide, indoor spray ground, and lazy river. The facility also has fitness equipment, including 20 matrix treadmills, 15 matrix ellipticals, matrix climb mills, matrix upright hybrid recumbent and cycle bikes, concept two rowers, side fit recumbent steppers, upper body arm ergometers, matrix selectorized strength machines, matrix free weights and double major rack, high performance circuit, including matrix S drive, S force and air bikes. From day passes to year-long memberships and everything in between. Lawn Bridge has a variety of options to help Arlingtonians meet their personal wellness goals. Memberships and day passes are available for sale. And now on to our next news story for this week. According to recently released census data, Arlington's population has increased over the past 10 years from 207,627 to 238,643. The 14% change was nearly double that of the state of Virginia. According to Assistant County Manager Brenna Helfer, Arlington's team of demographers in community planning and housing development will be taking time over the coming weeks and months to learn more about the 2020 census data and what it means for Arlington. Ms. Helfer also thanked the entire community for their participation in the 2020 census. And now on to our last news story for the week. Arlington Public Schools will receive a $795,000 grant from the state to be spent on three fully electric buses that will replace three with diesel engines. The EV vehicles, each with a capacity of some 65 passengers, will be equitably assigned to routes throughout Arlington. 
These will be the first EV buses in the APS fleet of 200. The vehicle slated for replacement each travel some 8,000 miles a year. The DES Equipment Bureau acquires and maintains all vehicles operated by the county government and APS. The grand announcement was made Thursday by Governor Ralph Northam as part of a push to electrify government fleets across the Commonwealth. Two members of the APS transportation team were in attendance in Richmond for the announcement. That does it for the news. Now on to our community bulletin board stories. Hi, and welcome to CBB. Uh-oh, September's coming. Actually, we're all probably ready for some cooler weather, even if it does bring a lot more rain. Meanwhile, here's an event for adults. You can join members of the Northern Virginia Bird Club for informal walks through Glen Carlin Park in search of resident and migratory birds. Experienced and beginning birders are welcome. Bring binoculars and field guides if you have them. For information, call 703-228-6535. The activity number is 612-941-A. That's on Wednesday, September 1st, from 8.30 to 11 o'clock a.m. at Long Branch Nature Center at Glen Carlin Park, 625 South Carlin Springs Road. Next up, we want you to know that free walk-in COVID-19 vaccinations are still available for individuals 12 and up at the following locations. Arlington Mill Community Center at 909 South Dinwiddie Street, Monday through Friday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 10 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Also at the Walter Reed Community Center, at 29096 16th Street South, Monday through Friday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. The vaccines are free, safe, and offer the best protection from COVID-19. Get the facts and then get yourself and your child vaccinated. Please bring any form of identification that will confirm your identity. For example, utility bills, pay stubs, insurance cards, or a driver's license. As for the specific vaccines being offered, you can get the Moderna, Pfizer, or Johnson & Johnson based on availability. For Moderna Pfizer, individuals will receive instructions at the end of their first dose on how to obtain their second dose. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a single shot and does not require a second dose. With case numbers once again increasing, obtaining the vaccination is something we all owe to the rest of our community. Next up, here's an event for history-minded kids ages 7 to 11. They'll learn how to drill like Union soldiers by practicing their marches and turns, as well as how to load in nine times with replica wood rifles. Since this is in Arlington, Confederate soldiers are out of luck. Registration is required, but only for kids. For information, call 703-228-4775. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 612-721-H. That's on Saturday, September 4th, from 12 o'clock noon to 1 o'clock p.m. at Fort C.F. Smith Park, 2411 24th Street North. Did I mention that September is coming and that there would be cooler weather? Well, the next event is called Seasonal Changes Campfire. So there you are. This event is for families. You'll need to register both children and adults because children must be accompanied by a registered adult. The whole family is invited to join in at Long Branch Nature Center for lots of old-fashioned fun. This engaging program will be filled with entertaining activities which may include stories, special animal guests, games, songs, 
and of course, s'mores. They want you to bring your own supplies, though. S'mores don't grow on trees, and they want the main event to be free. For information, call 703-228-6535. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 612-951-A, and that's coming up on Sunday, September 5th from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. at Long Branch Nature Center at Glen Carlin Park, 625 South Carlin Springs Road. Finally in CBB, here's a chance to join Arlington Public Library to celebrate the lighter side of literature. Take an escape with a romance and get to know Brianna Moore, author of All Stirred Up, who will join us for a Zoom discussion of her book, You don't have to read the book to join, but it is encouraged. Here's a description of the book. Susan Napier's family once lived on the success of the high-end restaurants founded by her late grandfather. But bad luck and worse management has brought the business to the edge of financial ruin. Now it's up to Susan to save the last remaining restaurant, Elliot's, the flagship in Edinburgh. But what awaits Susan in the charming city of Auld Reekie is more than she bargained for. Chris Baker, her grandfather's former protege and her ex-boyfriend, is also heading to the Scottish capital. After finding fame in New York as a chef and judge of a popular TV cooking competition, Chris is returning to his native Scotland to open his own restaurant. Although the storms have cleared after their intense and rocky breakup, Susan and Chris are redrawn into each other's orbit and their simmering attraction inevitably boils over. As Chris's restaurant opens to great acclaim and Susan tries to haul Elliot's back from the brink, the future brims with new promise. But darkness looms as they find themselves in the crosshairs of a gossip blogger eager for a juicy story and willing to do anything to get it. Can Susan and Chris reclaim their lost love or will the tangled past ruin their last hope for happiness? New members are always welcome. Instructions to join the Zoom meeting will be emailed to all registrants. That's coming up on Wednesday, September 8th from 12 o'clock noon to 1 o'clock p.m. For more information, go to the Arlington Library website. Now it's time for 55 Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but the big news for seniors is still that the 2021 Northern Virginia Senior Olympics is returning for its 39th season with an opening ceremony on Saturday, September 18th, at 9.30 a.m. at the Thomas Jefferson Community Center, 3501 2nd Street South in Arlington. Over 50 events will take place from September 18th through September 30th at 17 venues throughout Northern Virginia. Online-only registration goes until Monday, September 6th through www nvso.us. Registration brochures are available online. Now participants got to be 50 years of age by December 31st, 2021 and live in a sponsoring jurisdiction. The registration fee is $15, which covers multiple events. It is expected that all participants and volunteers will have been vaccinated against COVID-19 and follow protocols in place during the competitions. There are events from track and field to tennis and swimming and Sudoku and even crossword puzzles. Gold, silver and bronze medals will be awarded after each event. All events are open to the public. For information, you can email nvso1982 at gmail.com. Speaking of broken records, maybe you'll break a few records yourself. 
Next up, we got local history discussions. Now, here's a chance to have some fun recollecting and learning about Arlington's rich past. In September, you'll discuss the best places to eat after going on a date. You'll probably notice that the announcement says after going on a date, so you'll probably want some comfort food in case the date didn't turn out. Also, since this is about history and recollections, Y'all can probably talk about the great places that you used to go to that aren't there anymore. The group meets on the first Wednesday of each month. Register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 911-402-2. And it's coming up on Wednesday, September 1st from 1.30 to 2.45 p.m. This is a virtual event, just like the date, probably. Next up, the Travel Trivia event is a great way to virtually travel the far reaches of the globe with a stimulating trivia challenge. You can also connect with 55-plus friends and meet new people along the way. You might even get to swap some stories, but be warned, your own travel stories are thrilling adventures, but everyone else's are just trivia. For more information, you can call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 911-601-1. And that's coming up on Thursday, September 2nd from 11 o'clock a.m. to 12.30 p.m. You gotta be 55 and up. 55 plus membership is required, and this is also a virtual event. Last in 55 plus news, Arlington's 55 plus book club will be discussing Becoming, a book by former First Lady Michelle Obama. This book for young people is an honest and fascinating account of Michelle Obama's life led by example. She shares her views on how all young people can help themselves as well as help others no matter what their status in life. She asks readers to realize that no one is perfect and that the process of becoming is what matters and that finding yourself is an ever-evolving process. In telling her story with boldness, she asks young readers, who are you and what do you want to become? However, the concept is also applicable to readers of all ages. That's on Friday, September 3rd, from 12 o'clock noon to 1 o'clock p.m. Until further notice, this group will meet via Zoom. For the Zoom meeting information, register for the group's email list. Registrants will be sent the Zoom meeting information by email one day before the meeting. Now, this is a volunteer-run group. The library will not distribute login information to the group on Zoom. It's the volunteer who leads the group that will email the link to the Zoom meeting. For information, you can go to the Arlington Library website. Anyway, that's all I got for 55 plus news, but they're going to let me introduce more footage from last week's Arlington County Fair. And uh, yours truly, uh, Craig Nolan, emerging from a year and a half a hiatus from the Arlington Weekly News, and here we are at the Arlington, not weekly, the Arlington Annual Fair on uh, somewhere around uh, the middle of the uh, latter part of August 2021. And uh, boy, they got lucky on the weather today. The sun is blasting us as I speak. And uh, it's a little muddy over there by the, uh, where the uh, uh, heavy vehicles uh, pull the rides and stuff through. It's nothing but a kind of a mud trail, but a uh, great day, really nice day. Temperature yeah, it's in the beautiful. 80s, you know. Beautiful. Camp yeah. Pippet is here with me. How you doing, Cam? I'm doing okay. Are you I'm doing the all fair? right. Just fairly good. Fairly good. Yeah. Well, they have. Uh, I walked by the uh, concession stands over there, and I can smell the uh, 
the odiferous delights wafting this way. Ah, uh, the popcorn, uh, the, uh, the hot dogs, and the, uh, the grease, and the tacos, ah, the grease, and uh, the funnel cakes, and all of that stuff is available here at uh, Arlington County Fair, circa 2021. Uh, you should come on down. They've got this is our opening. This is the opening day, if I am not mistaken, on uh, this Wednesday. I guess they agree. And uh, it's so a you've raid. Got another Four or five days. The police. Sunday, the uh, 24th, something like that, 23rd. Uh, so you got plenty of time to come on down. Hopefully the weather will cooperate and uh, you'll have a chance to uh, check in and with all of the festivities and the rides and uh, take part in the Arlington County Fair, eh? Yeah, have a good time. It's yeah, great. So We're we, having a good time. We don't, as you can tell, we don't, I don't have anything prepared. We're just sort of stretching and standing here with a microphone and uh yeah it's <laughs> giving us stretch giving us cute giving us cues but you know i remember in years past when uh, the uh, the fair was not <sighs> big uh and the from what i've been told the uh, indoor the indoor exhibits are not open yet Is that's that right, right not till friday the indoor exhibits open friday here comes mr that's Hep. right see that's i get to be alfred hitchcock and walk into this now I, I get to we want to welcome you all to the 2021 Arlington County Fair. You know, we weren't really sure we were going to be able to have a fair this year. Uh, we tried very hard. We paid attention to what was going on. And back in April, things looked like they were getting pretty good, right? Um, so we condensed a year's worth of planning into a very few short months, and today you have the Arlington County Fair. Um, things aren't looking as good as they were in April, so we do appreciate everybody wearing your mask inside. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who is so wonderful in helping us put together this fair every year, um, but I'd like to keep my remarks short and sweet as well. Uh, we're very appreciative of Arlington County. We have a few representatives from the Arlington County Board here today. Thank you guys for coming. We really do appreciate it. And while the Arlington County Fair is a 501c3, we're an independent nonprofit, we do want to thank Arlington County government for all that they do, the various departments that come together to help us put on this wonderful fair, specifically Laura Berrigan with the Arlington County Department of Parks and Rec. very appreciative of RC Cole and Cole Shows, our carnival vendor. Uh, living the Pie Life, which is donating free pie, because I know every single one of you is going to enter the pie eating contest, because you get a free shirt and a piece of pie. Um, Arlington JCs, they always go above and beyond for us. I saw Paul Showalter over here. Thank you, Paul. We also have Beth Wolf and Walnut Creek Farms who do our goat yoga. And I have to tell you, no other fair in Virginia has goat yoga. We're the only ones. Yeah. And then we have axe throwing this year too for everyone who's been cooped up inside and want to get some of that frustration out. And following the ribbon cutting today, we'd like to invite everybody to a neighborhood event over in the beer garden over here on Old South Cleave behind 7-Eleven where we have a family friendly beer garden and we'll be having our neighborhood event with some cake. Um, so that's all I have for you right now. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much. And uh, right now Matt De Ferranti is our county board member. To speak. Thank you Barbie and Give another hand for Barbie and all of the board members of our county fair who put in so much time. Folks, you don't get paid to do this job. You do it out of the goodness of your heart, and it is so wonderful to have this fair this year. Uh, always liked, I liked the Iowa State Fair when I lived there. I love this fair, and I would say, you may not know, but this is one of the larger free county, no cost of admission to this county fair, and so it's one of the larger ones on the East Coast. Um, since 1977. I want to recognize Senator Favola, Delegate Patrick Hope, School Board Member, School Board Vice Chair Reed Goldstein, School Board Member David Pretty, 
my colleagues on the county board, uh, Takis Carantonis, and the liaison, Christian Dorsey, who has worked with the, the fair for quite a while and uh, such important, important work. So um, just a couple of other facts and then we'll get to cutting the, cutting the ribbon. Um, one thing you should know about is that um, the fair is, we're actually considering whether to keep the fair at TJ or whether to find a new uh, location. And on Friday afternoon indoors, you'll have the chance to offer your thoughts on that. That'll be coming. Um, and I think that pretty much covers the list that I had. Let me just be sure. Um, another thanks. I don't know if Jane Andelman is here and Savannah Booth. Jane, thanks very much for your work as vice chair. Um, it's been a while since we've met in uh, with, with Barbie and Jane and Savannah and all of her colleagues. Um, the fair's budget relies on income from the rides and from the concessions, uh, but particularly the rides. So make sure to get your family here and enjoy the county fair, uh, please. Um, with that, uh, I will say also uh, a thanks to our, uh, our law enforcement is keeping us safe, thanks to Chief Penn who's here, and our, our uh, deputies. Um, and also, uh, with that, let's get some good food, maybe not perfect for you, but good for you to, to taste. And first, we'll start off, come on over and we'll cut the ribbon. Thanks so much for coming to the fair this year. And that concludes this week's show. We will be back next week with more news from Arlington. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. Mm -hmm.